What would the reptilian brain do? It knows that if it wipes out and kills all its competition, commits genocide, which we see ancient cultures doing to their neighbors over and over again, if you kill everybody, if you come in to the promised land, or you're the Aztecs, you come into a Mayan area, and you kill everybody, or you're the Nazis, you're going to go around the world and take over, have an administrative system, have carbon taxes, the Nazis proposed similar taxes, and then have one-child policies, forced inoculations, soft kill. Then you kill everybody except your people, then you win. That's the reptilian brain. But, of course, then that idea continues, and the Nazis would have gone on forever basically killing each other, just like the priest class were doing in Israel. Whenever they didn't have some new enemy to fight, they started pressing the tribes under them. This is just what human beings do over and over again. And uh, here is a Rolling Stone, and you open this up. I should have put a bookmark in here. And it's Ray Kurzweil. This is exactly what I said in Endgame from his writings and the UN's writings and the Club of Rome's writings and the World uh, Transhumanist Society and... All the big billionaire tech owners, they go to big meetings, and, and, and uh, I mean, it's everywhere. When man and machine merge, and it says, meet Ray Kurzweil, prophet of the techno rapture. He's made billions of dollars, invented a bunch of computer systems. By 2045, he really says 2020. Computers will surpass us in intelligence. The universe itself will become conscious, and humans will live forever. But when you actually read what Kurzweil says and what the, all the rest say, they say the elite are going to kill off the majority of us. They're going to merge with the silicon system that they call rational. It's the reptilian brain, logic. They say it's logic that I kill all of you and then I win. They, they, uh, they revel in mathematic equations, but really it's just cold-blooded wickedness. They would say there is no such thing as wicked. I am beyond good and evil. I'm going to kill you. Now, this article doesn't get into all of that. It gets into some of it. Bill Joyce, why the future doesn't need us, does. But it gets into all the things Kurzweil invented and all the things he did. Molecular robots will spread through the tiniest recesses of all matter. Kurzweil predicts uh, turning rocks into trees and living computers. We won't experience 100 years of progress in the 21st century. It will be more like 20,000 years of progress. And he just says, oh, you won't take brain chips? It won't matter. The nanotech will instantly take you over. So they're, they're saying resistance is futile. You don't have a, 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 a choice. We are the final revolution. And then they put in a liberal, sicky, feely packaging. What say you to this? Because when I read the real globalist documents, they say they're going to kill the majority of us because we don't deserve the life extension technology and that if they can just be made to live to be 140 or so, people that are like 70 now, that then they'll have eternal lives as nanotech beings that will send their consciousness out as spores on the solar wind. I'm not saying this. They're saying it. And they call us nuts, David Icke. This is what the world elite believe. This is their religion. What is this? Well, it's, uh, it's uh, uh, just a tantamount to the, the insanity that lies behind um, all that's happening. See, cleverness and wisdom are not the same thing. And in fact, cleverness without wisdom is the most destructive force on earth. And they are on a mind level um, clever, um, but they are not wise. And that's why they're so destructive and devastatingly destructive in their, um, in their potential to, um, to, to wreak havoc in, in even greater uh, levels and amounts than they have uh, up to this point. They're basically insane. They do not have the ability to uh, connect through empathy. Uh, through consciousness, through any form of uh, what we would call human connection. And therefore, you know, they are, and, you know, I know people have, have laughed and dismissed it in, 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 the, uh, in, the, in the past, and, and, and good luck to them. But there is a reason why these people understand fundamentally how to manipulate the reptilian brain of humans, and that's because they are reptilian. And uh, they are the epitome of every trait that we talked about uh, today, um, in the reptilian brain, and one of one of them is that it is stupid and it does not learn from experience, and it is it is um, hell bent on taking this uh, to to the sort of levels you're talking about. But we and 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 they've been working towards this for a long time. I mean, I've been talking about this nanotechnology, which are beyond microchips. You see, because the body uh, is a biological computer, 
you can access it through techno technological means. This is what this whole thing about the uh, computer brain interface is, where they're talking about putting a chip in the brain and then you can work your computer without using your hands. Um, that's all because they're actually connecting two computers, one more fantastic than the other, yes, but two computers. And so this nanotechnology takes on a completely new light when you realize that, because its ability to influence the body computer is fantastic. And uh, that's the real level that they're operating on, the, the nano level. All right, long segment coming up. Take phone calls. 30 minutes left with David Icke, davidike.com. And David, tell them about your speaking engagements uh, when we get back. Okay, okay, folks, stay with us. We'll be right back. Do you understand how dark it is? How far down the line we are? How late it is? Briefly getting back into this Ray Kurzweil stuff. I know you've read what the futurists and the transhumanists and the eugenicists say. And, and, and you're right. They just say, well, we're scientific. And we say that you have no right to the future and we're going to get rid of you. But then if you talk about going after them physically, they freak out and yell and scream and call SWAT teams on you. So really it's just a cold-blooded, as we say, and again, reptiles are cold-blooded, the reptilian brain. This is a cold-blooded idea and system, and they sit there like our opinions don't even matter. But that's a mind game. We do have force of will. We can stand up to them, and they're scared of us having that purpose and deciding we're not listening to their propaganda. We are warm-blooded. We do have red blood, and we're marching against their tyranny, whatever the cost, because humanity's future depends on it not being captured by a group of predatory homo sapien sapiens uh, who are uh, acting uh, like vampires. Yeah, the thing is, Alex, that what they're terrified of um, more than anything else is people becoming conscious beyond mind and beyond the computer level of perception. You can see in their own writings how they, they use phrases like, uh, you know, in in my words, they they're terrified of mavericks. Mavericks are people that could could bring the whole thing down. And what are mavericks? Mavericks are people who are not programmed, who, who are not following secular ritual behavior and responses and reactions, but are actually conscious enough to to um, act in ways that are different to the norm, ways that you can't call. And you know, um, when it's so important that if you take the, the 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 body to be to be in the center of this, on one side you've got the um, the Illuminati families, and I would say what is behind them, um, trying to program the computer and trying to destabilize the computer. Because all this stuff with fluoride and aspartame and, and all these other electrochemical sources of disruption, they're there to literally put viruses in the computer. And when you put viruses in your laptop computer, what happens? It stops working properly. It stops thinking straight. It stops uh, operating to full potential. That's the idea. But when consciousness enters enters the body, um, it can overpower those programs and it can overpower those effects on the body. I, I, I remember a, a story it illustrates what I'm talking about when there was one of these, uh, these Eastern mystic guys um, uh, who was being used as part of an LSD experiment when they were experimenting in the 60s with LSD and some uh, professor was over uh, trying to see the effect on people. And he gave this guy a dose of LSD, which, which should have blown his mind. Nothing happened. The guy smiled at him. He then um, uh, doubled the dose eventually, and the guy um, uh, still smiled at him, and there was no effects of the LSD on this guy uh, whatsoever. Why? Because the guy was conscious, and through consciousness, it overpowered the effect of the drug. And that's just an illustration of how... When we're conscious, we can overpower all these attacks on the body, and we can see through the, uh, the, the from a consciousness point of view, blatant uh, means of manipulation. And that's what these guys are terrified of, and I mean terrified, because when humanity becomes conscious, their game is over. It's like we talked about last time in the the movie uh, uh, with the grasshoppers where he said to the about the ants if they work out that there's uh, you know loads of them and a few of us there goes our way of life when we become conscious there goes our way of life and that's why they have worked so constantly and incessantly through electrochemical means through programming through uh, words and other means uh, through religious uh, belief uh, extremism and uh, and dogma to hold us in body consciousness and uh, that's what they're terrified of, of us breaking out of and we're doing it and that's why they're in a panic and david i mean just to simplify it 
by poisoning the higher brain, the, you know, the higher levels, which is a, a physiological fact, as people get poisoned and toxified more and more, they revert to the lower animal, reptile, saltwater crocodile brain. And just like a person, once they've had Alzheimer's, now people at 25 getting it from all the aluminum and mercury, yeah. everything reverts back to the level of a baby and the old man's throwing his feces against the wall. I mean, that's a horrible uh, parallel, but that's they want to keep us in that. And now you talk to the public, you watch sitcoms, and they talk slow. And the public, you, you see the public, you'll see somebody who's upright, and, and, and they'll kind of be at a store looking around at other people kind of freaked out. I was having this experience last night in two stores I went to. You could see people that were conscious. They'd be like, oh, you're conscious. And they were kind of all freaked out. And then the rest of the people are like, ooh. And, I'm real, and it seems like it's accelerating right now, David.